The Angolans putting the ball in the air a lot. There's his experience number 10, Colleen Johnson, heading it forward. And it will go into touch. So a lot of hustling there for the Antigua number three. Antigua have a throw in. in the big throw at the number six for Antigua on the head of the Anguillans. Back on the foot of the number six. Anguilla back in contact. It's a seesaw battle here right now. Antigua trying to push forward. Anguilla trying to stop them. That should go into touch and it should be. In fact, the referee has signaled a corner. So someone from Anguilla got their foot on that and that will be a corner for Antigua. Antigua have not been too impressive on the set plays. We've seen a little quick dabble. The Anguillans are more effective on the corners and the set plays. And so the Antiguans will have to be careful there. And there the ball goes into touch again. So a throw in for the Antiguans. And again, we've seen three times now, Shanika Knowles has taken the throw. So she's probably one of their better throwers or one of their designated throwers. So Knowles will take the throw in. In goes Knowles, a very nice throw into the center. Who's there? Onto the head of one of the Antiguans trying to get it forward. The Anguillans all back now, well spread, so that's a good sign. Number 10, again, Colleen Johnson, very experienced. They'll have trouble passing her. She's very good indeed, and there you go. As, uh, as suggested, unable to pass Colleen Johnson. Very experienced and strong player. And f I've noticed, and I, I don't know if it's the best move by the Anguillans, but I'm not the coach, to have Colleen Johnson in the back. They still need to score goals. So Johnson, in defense today, as there she goes to put in the touch, unfortunately she sees she's made an error because the ball has gone for a corner. And that's certainly not the best way to put the ball out. You don't want to give away corners. Unfortunately for the Antiguans, they're not very good at the set plays. So they're unable to take advantage of these. Let's see what they do this angle. Driven in this time, but only as far as the Gwilin head. And the ball going to touch. Well, let's see if the number six goes for it this time for the throw. Here she comes, yes. Knows as, as always. Consistent as ever. We'll take the throw into the Antigua. Have their set throws. That's Sheeda Knowles. So Knowles will take the throw in. She had a very strong arm. In she goes. Nice throw into the center. Again. Bad play by the number 13 from Anguilla. That's the striker. She's too far back. She's supposed to be on the right wing. She's ended up on the left wing all the way back. I'm not too sure what that's all about. So she's certainly out of position and is making no effort whatsoever to get back into her position. She's walking slowly and I guess just deciding she'll conserve energy as she's already out of, out of position. So, there we are. No one there for Anguilla to get the ball because the person who should be there is now going into the, into the center. She's slowly making her way forward. Will she walk her way right into offside? That's going to be a throw for Anguilla and she's right up now. The only person ahead of her will be the number the flamboyant number 16. That's Buckley with the red hairdo from Antigua. Just ahead of her in the line. She goes any further forward. The number 13 for Anguilla. That's to, of course, remind who that is. That's Roxanne Bradshaw. She will be offside. So Bradshaw realizing that stops now. Doesn't move any further forward. Buckley goes for it. Then decides to leave it. The ball goes into touch because it is an Antigua kick. Nil nil here on a Saturday afternoon at the A.O. Shelley Recreation Grounds. Antigua versus Anguilla. An interesting matchup here because all the three main teams, or the three other teams, have all won or lost to each other. That's St. Kitts, Antigua, and Anguilla have all lost to each other. So it's been a bit of a, a round seesaw battle. They've all gotten a point and all lost a point. Only the BVI have lost all their matches to date. And here goes Anguilla again. Again, the point I was making, the, the number 13 still out of position. She should be on the right side. The number 10, who plays very well on the left, is in the fullback for Anguilla. That's Colleen Johnson. And they are unable to really control and get a nice attack on the Antiguans. Not too sure why they decided to make this change against Antigua. I, I found that they did such a good job with the set the line that they had against the Virgin Islands. They should have kept that. But they haven't done so. And as we've seen, they've looked rather stroppy of the Anguillans. Um, on, the, on the attack when they've come up against the Ante a stronger defensive Antiguan side. I would have thought the Antiguan defensive, I mean the Angolan defensive players are strong enough to hold their own and they would have left number 10 which is Colleen Johnson on the left side. 
and of course keep Roxanne on the right side. That's the number 13, Roxanne Bradshaw. Nevertheless, I'm at the coach. There goes Johnson. Like I said, a lovely foot, but now she had to take a shot from the midfield. She should be on the left side. I know I've said it before, having to make her work too hard, and that should that will will, will water down, so to speak, the Anguillan attack, and may let the Antiguans in later on. The Antiguans have actually had more attacks at goal, but the Anguillans have better shots because they have better shooters. Certainly, I'm not convinced that the, the lineup I'm seeing with the Anguillans today, the way that they have ro rotated their side, is, is, is the best. And I'm still a little concerned. And I'll be, it'll be interesting to see if at the half that the, the, the coach for the Anguillans doesn't make that change and brings Colleen Johnson back to the front. So Johnson, again, heads that one, trying to look for, for Roxanne Bradshaw. The Antiguans, strong on defense. They bungle on you and they, they work hard to clear the ball. There they go again, into touch, and that will be a throw-in for Anguilla. Nil-nil here at the Oshale Recreation Grounds. Only Colleen Johnson, really, has taken a shot from about 35 yards out. She's the best striker next to her, and she's from Anguilla, will, will be Roxanne Bradshaw. Both of the top strikers are on the Anguillan side. No one from Antigua really shining yet. We've seen a couple of nice throw-ins by Shakida Knowles, the number six of Antigua. And hard working number three for Antigua as well. That would be like Miss James. Um, well, she's James anyway. We, we're trying to see her first name here. Not legible, but her Miss James. So again, coming in, the Antiguan keeper, quite proficient, comfortable. I wouldn't say she looks as good as the BVI keeper, Brittany Peters, but certainly not a bad keeper. This could be dangerous for the Antiguans. Will they go forward? Will they attack? Oh dear, what's happening here? Waiting too late and a big collision. What's the call? What's the call? We saw a similar play like this with and when when Antigua played the Virgin Islands and it was the the feeling of the Antiguan officials of the Virgin Islands officials that they should have called uh, a foul on the Antiguan striker and given a free kick to the Virgin Islands instead a goal was scored and the, and the goal was awarded to to the Antiguans. That game ended up 4-0 in favor of, of the Antiguans on that day. Well, we see now this time, what has she given? What, this time she has, she's given the favor to the, to the, to the goalkeeper, which, which was correct because the, there was a collision there. And the keeper was really just trying to protect the ball. The player ran into her. And that was, in my estimation, the better call. So Antigua back on attack. There's the number three, Miss James. She has been the most busy, I would say, on the right-hand side for the Antiguans. But really, nothing happened. There's a flamboyant number 16. Kanika Buckley with the long red hair. You can't miss her. Stands out like a sore thumb with that red hair. In come the Anguillans. A little uh, uneasy. Not, not organized at all in the front of the Anguillans this afternoon. And I, I, I still am lost and confused and wondering why Colleen Johnson is being played so far back. I just can't get it out from my mind. I can't understand why you'd have your better player, probably your best player in my estimation, playing in defense when you have good enough and strong enough players in the back. And she would certainly make a big difference in the front. The Angolans have, have not been steady, but here comes Colleen Johnson now, where she should be, coming up for the striker. She's a very smart girl. She's spinning and turning. Let's see the kick, the number 13. She's the other big kicker. Johnson's trying to get to the end of it. Off of the, the shoulder of one of the Antigua, and it goes into touch. So Colleen Johnson coming in there. You see the combination there of Roxanne Bradshaw, who took the kick, trying to get it onto the head of Johnson. She was unable to do so, but of course, Johnson, Colleen Johnson would be somewhat tired now, having to run all the way from the back to come forward, and has been doing a lot of the utility work here today. And I don't know if after their loss, uh, to St. Kitts that they lost some confidence or was it the other way around and, and they decided to, uh, to, to to put Johnson back not sure here so the ball was into touch and it should be an Anguillan's ball Colleen Johnson has decided to stay forward they lost Antigua they haven't lost ok they haven't ok oh, alright so Right, so in fact, I, I, producers reminded me here that actually St. Kitts are the ones that beat St. Kitts. So they are actually the team that is undefeated. 
And maybe the reason why they've made this change is a bit of overconfidence. We'll have to wait and see. So Anguilla, in fact, is the one team that hasn't lost. I, 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 I thought for a minute, again, I made an error that Anguilla is the one that had lost the game. Anguilla, in fact, defeated both Antigua and St. Kitts. So they have been undefeated to date. So they would need to lose to Antigua today, BVI and, and St. Kitts. So they would need to lose to Antigua today for, to, to acquire their first loss. If they win today, then comfortably they've won the tournament and they were the only undefeated team. So two, fly, two flags hanging that look very similar. That, of course, is Anguilla and the BVI. Both, of course, territories of, 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 of the United Kingdom. As you see, Colin Johnson trying to stay forward now. So now Colin Johnson has come on to the right. And, and again, I'm, I'm not quite too sure what the Anguillans are doing here today because although they're undefeated, Colin Johnson is now playing on the right where Roxanne Bradshaw is supposed to be. Now Johnson is coming in. She's also been playing in the back and sort of suffering from the Laverne Foy syndrome where she wants to play in every position. Maybe she's good enough to do so. We'll have to wait and see. So. Very good foot, Roxanne Bradshaw will put it in. Looking for Colin Johnson! Johnson at the end of it. And that could be put down to fatigue, really. Nice try by Colin Johnson. But as we've predicted before, those will be the two people who will have to really make the play. They're the, the, the two most exciting players. Again, we saw the cross in coming from Roxanne Bradshaw and Colin, onto the boots of Colin, of, 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 of Colin, jo Colin Johnson, un un unable to, to convert on that one. But that is what we expected to see. And this is the reason why I'm, I'm wondering why Colleen Johnson is, was, was, was asked to play in the back. But um, the, the switch seems to have been made. And now Johnson is, is, is staying up to the front completely where she really needs to be because the defensive team of the Anguillans is strong enough to, to, hold, to hold the fort. They've got a strong enough defensive side. Johnson doesn't need to be running back and forward. So Johnson stays at the front where she should be. Was she playing on the right or on the left? Is she playing midfield? Is she playing centre forward? She's going into the centre. Let's see where she stays. Roxanne Bradshaw goes to the right, where she's been playing for the whole tournament. So, Bradshaw on the right. Colin Johnson in the centre. The number 14 has been, hasn't really done much. Shamel Hodge, she's been on the left, but hasn't really been in much of the play in the first two games that we've seen. There she is now, very tentative, very, uh, somewhat of a weak player, very little control, is the number 14, Shamel Hodge. The Antiguans trying to answer. And really, not knowing where the goal is, just trying to turn and shoot. Not a bad attempt as far as the, the, what she tried to do, but unfortunately she really didn't quite know where the goal was and the ball went into touch. But I'll give her credit for certainly having the, the, the courage to turn and take a shot at goal. A very difficult shot indeed. So much, so, so much you've seen at a higher level, but yeah, um, certainly good to see the Antiguans trying that. So the two girls tangling up and that'll be the half time. The whistle goes and at the end of the first half, here at the A.O. Shelley Recreation Grounds, the score is Anguilla nil, Antigua nil, and it could very easily have been a one nil for Anguilla, but it ends up Nil-nil. We'll take a pause for a cause to thank our sponsors and see you after the break. <laughs> 